And uh, I haven't got a gang with me or anything like that. I haven't even got a friend with a sick stomach. So uh, I'll ask you to bear with me for the next 15 minutes or so. And uh, then we come to an end. Um, it's, it's very loud down there. I appreciate that I've been sitting down there for a good while at the end. And it's not very easy to, uh, to have to sit and listen to uh, poetry all the time. But anyway, we'll battle on as best we can. I'd like to begin um, with a couple of... Oh, for a second, with a couple of poems that have to do um, with travel um, and uh, with uh, women basically, uh, with travellers, because I believe that all of us somewhere in our hearts are travellers. And I remember being back in Ireland um, uh, back about seven or eight years ago and um, I live in Germany most of the time, um, um, but um, I was back here and I heard people talking about travellers and gypsies from Romania and they were sort of stealing potatoes from fields and they were doing all kinds of odd things. And um, I thought it was terrible because Ireland has populated the world really with all kinds of people. And then I went back to Hamburg, I remember, and I was cycling around on a lovely fine day on my bicycle. I was in a graveyard, I love cycling around to the graveyard. And I came across these huge big tombstones and there was a guy putting fresh flowers all around them. He was a gypsy. And we sat and talked for about an hour about the notion of travel. And afterwards, I wrote this poem, and I called it A Gypsy Woman in Ireland. These days in Ireland, people talk about the price of sites, the cost of tribunals, property abroad, or refugees. Lazy people come for our riches who won't work. They steal, eat raw from our fields, blacken our reputation, and colour the skin of our children. I am Sonia, I am Sonia, a gypsy woman who dreamed colours and grew up gathering berries in a village in Romania. I earned my way to university to become a doctor and the pride of my mother's heart. My father never had a nation and died in Auschwitz. I was arrested with a bundle of leaflets and when I had to flee to Ireland I was sad not to be a doctor, not to visit my mother's grave, to marry an Irish man. I have never stolen. I am spring clean, stalk strong, proud and honest as the memory of snails and owls in our desolate garden. I fled when a sneering bullet ended my mother's life. She died at the mean will of our state, in our house, in my place. Now I can only shelter behind my husband's curtains in a childless fourth floor flat before closing time in Dublin. I still see my uncle blazing with his shining sittle and shirt sleeves. My husband in Ireland, you gave me my first passport and beat me daily for the sighs and secret in our troubled death songs, like Irish songs, for my childhood and fields, for our hawks, falcons and silver, for the poetry in my people. I should be able to talk in the shops, but they listen away from my accent. I cannot tell them of our winters, of our trees whistling like the shades of accordion music. I have learned to hide behind candles in churches, to disappear into the woodwork and to listen to the distant patience in the singing of my ancestors, homeless in Romania, homeless in Serbia, homeless inland, homeless in Ireland. The flowers have gone out on another summer. I'm a year closer to my mother. Thank you. I'd like to continue on a little bit of that theme of, of, of travel and roads um, because um, I, I grew up as, as like a lot of people did, you know, this whole battle that went on between and I, uh, between you know, the settled and the travelling community. I think the traveller in me is the thing that keeps me alive. And the day I stop travelling is the day I drop dead, you know, which is, and I love the notion of just moving and travelling. I travel an awful lot myself. I live in Germany, but the poetry takes me everywhere because, uh, as people rightly say, you can't make any money on the bloody thing on the books, so you have to travel to make work, do workshops, to live. So anyway, I, I call this thing, poetry is, uh, po roads are a shared language. And it's the whole notion of a, a, a travelling woman, a Roma gypsy woman, coming to Ireland, not having the language, but meeting up with other travellers, and they had a shared language, they had the language of the road in their blood. Roads are a shared language. When I look into your eyes, I feel like an ancient mother who had lost her daughter to the underworld for a while. I see myself 
and I see a child like a keepsake under stars before maps were drawn, before crossroads, tar or chronicles. My people shared straw beds with skeletons, grew into roads, tapped to the wheel tapping and the clip and trip of pie balls. When our infants died, village women broke rank to mourn for us, for sorry, with us, for ours and their own. Destiny doesn't spell itself out. I am touched by the silence of your olive skin, by your words for gush and bramble. Shrubs and bracken cluster by the hedgerows when you sing of the marketplace. At sunrise, we will drape old horses, but tonight you will grace logs of ash and elder with tales of ripe fruit and pomegranate seeds. Let us share our lot, burn the dwellings of the dead and move on. I see the faces of my children in every pebble, but the roads are not ours alone. Thank you. Excuse me for that, that thing, I lost the page there for a second. Um, my poetry was translated into the Indonesian language a number of years ago, and uh, I was taken to Indonesia, it was wonderful, uh, and uh, at the, the International Writers' Festival in, in Bali, and it, it was wonderful, I toured all around the country. I had a wonderful time, I didn't know what they were saying when they were reading my poetry, but I couldn't have cared less. Some said it wasn't a great translation, I didn't care either. Uh, but I had a wonderful time floating around, and. and uh, I was collected at the, at the, I remember at the airport in Bali by this guy in a jeep and he stopped and he brought me over and he put a garland of flowers all around my neck and put me into the back of the jeep and drove me 40 kilometers into these hills and I said to myself, I don't give a damn about anything else in this world, this is the best moment I've ever had, it was amazing. And I made a huge mistake then afterwards, I wanted to give him a real big tip, he was being paid by somebody else and I had, I just got off the plane, I didn't know how much the money was worth. So I had this rupee, and I had a thousand, and I said, oh, yeah, that must be a good bit. I gave him that, and I saw his face drop. And afterwards, I, I asked somebody, how much is a thousand rupee? And they said, oh, you can't give anybody that's worth nothing. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, my publisher brought the book from Jogjakarta, where her publishing house is, to, uh, to Bali, and gave it to me very early one morning, about half past seven, and I was, I was blown, out, blown away. A writer's festival on Bali. In a few hours, the Writers' Festival in Ubud is to begin. The town is on the verge of dawn. Sun and rooster rhyme climb into my bloodstream. I try to visualize what I see, but only see what I sense in the percolating dark. I cannot wait for your message, gods. Rebirth has already begun building in my bones. I can hear it. There are no window panes to filter heady scents sauntering in and out of my bedroom, and the shower is open to the sky. Life and I seem to be pulling away from each other, and there are other elements that just will not be still, like flowers on the brain, like colors on the tongue, like so many shades whispering. My feet have grown cold on the marble, but feel as silky as fresh growth after rain. Something small flits up the wall. There'll be workshops and readings later. It's special to be trapped in a morning ritual with a little rice field across the street. An electric drill and parrot-like whistle have joined in. I feel undressed and clumsy, yet sheltered in clusters of thicker wind. Roosters have grown still, but a cement mixer takes over as Rosa Herliani walks up the road with my new book in her language. This moment feels like a stairs warming, step by step, as it leads down and down. Thank you.